Yo, what's up, everybody? Carlton T. Clay here with another episode of VPN Chat. I'm very excited about this one because this person has been with me for a very long time. And we are going to talk and have a very good conversation. I'm excited about this conversation that we're going to have. Let's bring on, you know her from The Lion's Den as Keisha. And she's been on a plethora of other stuff with VPN. Let's bring on Chantel Wheeler. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for being here for VPN Chat. I'm so excited for us to have this conversation. Um, I've been looking forward to it for a minute. So. Yes. So um, as I did in the introduction, I said you were someone I've been working with for a very long time, like Truth. Uh, like almost 20 years. Truth. Literally, literally <laughs> almost 20 years. Um, So let's start with our beginning. Well, first, before we start with our beginning, let's get get let the people know a little bit more about you how did you get started with acting because you're an actress you're a singer songwriter all that great stuff how did you get started just in entertainment in general um well growing up I always uh moved around a lot and um we used to get picked on because we talked different from you know the people that lived wherever we lived at the time and so uh, one of my coping mechanisms was to learn how to speak the way that the people spoke wherever I lived. So um, that kind of led into me um, getting into playing different characters and learning how to do different voices and stuff. And so uh, it kind of just took off from there. I grew up singing in the choir in church so I've always sung um as a matter of fact everybody in my family can sing I'm just the only one that kind of took the next steps and started you know performing and doing it professionally uh hold on let me let me, let me um let me interrupt real quick real quick you said everybody in your family can sing so I, and I know your family so your mom and dad can sing yes wow so yeah, I feel like I need to experience that because <laughs> I, <laughs> everybody that knows Chantel's parents, like her dad doesn't really say a lot in public. I mean, her mom talks, but I I didn't know that they actually, I didn't know that they, they could sing. That's, I just learned something today. That's cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, like gro growing up, uh, when people would come to my house, uh, it was almost like, you were guaranteed to get a show. You would get dinner and a show because my mom would be like, hey, y'all, do this song, do that scene from this movie, and we would be on it. And so people, especially when we lived in Germany, because we lived on the fourth floor, mm -hmm. there was no elevator. So when people were coming to visit, they were going to be there for a while. So we would put on concerts, and, I mean, we would do skits and all this. So... Um, everybody in my family is, is talented on so many levels, but I'm just the only one that was like, I can take this and make, make something out of it. Um, and then, you know, I moved to Georgia and got into, um, theater in college, uh, and end up letting that be my major and it just blossomed from there. Awesome. I remember, um, and out of the beginnings of our relationship, you did a one woman show. And yes. I was so blown away by the talent that was on that stage. Cause that, this was for your uh was it your senior thesis or think senior project or something like that? Yes, it was my senior project. And my teacher, well, my advisor said to me uh at the beginning of the semester, I was like, you know, I need to meet with you because we need to work on this. And he was like, oh, just write a paper. And I was like, I will not write a paper. I'm an actress. I'm going to do a show. And you're my advisor. We, we need to meet so we can talk about this. And it was almost like he didn't want me to do it. But then when I explained it's happening, whether you agree or not, then he started getting into it. And uh, it's one of my proudest moments of college 
because I had an acting teacher when I was uh, first starting. And it was like, she always, um, it was, it was like everything I did, she didn't really understand it. Mm -hmm. And so um, I auditioned for Raising in the Sun and I didn't get cast. I didn't cast as anything. And I was just like, okay, well, maybe it's because they just don't know me. But I would audition for stuff throughout my college career. And I just wouldn't get roles. And I was like, man, what is going on? Like, I know I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so when I did my one woman show, she came to the show. And she came up to me afterwards. And she was crying. And she was like, I wish I would have cast you in A Raisin in the Sun. Wow. 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 That's I, I, mean, I felt so um like validated in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like everything I I did to lead up to that moment, I was like, I knew I could do this. And I just proved it to everybody. Absolutely. One thousand percent. Which leads us to um talking about our initial meeting. Um well, how I initially met Chantel. This is a funny. I love telling the story because it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. I always, I always tell Chantel. I'm always gonna tell this story because it's it, it's a fun. It's not really an inside joke with us, but it kind of is in a way. But anyway, so I I was doing this play, uh, The Lord's Prayer, and yes. Dwayne Green. Shout out to Dwayne. Dwayne Green was uh one of the leads. And so, I didn't know, of course, I didn't know Chantel then, but that's the reason why Chantel came to the play was because of Dwayne. And yes. so, um, I remember after the show, of course, when you do a play, when you are when you are part of it, you got all these people that are coming up to you, they want to talk to you, they want to say congratulations, or they want to ask you, what are you doing next? Because I want to be a part of it. Whatever's happening, it's a whole bunch of stuff happening. If you're a, if you're a performer... You know that when you after you're done with the performance, it's gonna be the swarm of people coming at you from all directions. And you don't necessarily remember everybody or every single thing after the fact. So anyway, I do remember Chantel. I remember Chantel coming up to me, but it was another girl behind her. So I just assumed that they were together. And so I remember um I think both of y'all I no, both of y'all gave me all your information. And so you had you gave me the right information. The other girl gave me the wrong information. I had so I was trying to find her as well. And so I was at AS, well, ASU at the time. It's AU now, but ASU. And um this is later on. And then, then you came up to me. And I'm trying to remember what else happened. I don't I'm I think you asked me something. Can you can you finish that story out? So basically, Carlton was in the media lab and I think he was editing something or getting some DVDs printed or something. I don't know. Yeah. But I saw him and I was like, oh, that's the guy that did the play. Let me go speak. And I was like, hey, hey how you doing? And Carlton was like, hello. And I was like, uh, Okay, well, I'm Chantel. I came to your play. I introduced myself and let you know that, you know, if you ever needed an actress or anything, that I'm available and I gave you my information. And Carlton was just like, okay. And I was like, okay, so have a good day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like you're clearly clear busy and you're just a bit above talking to you know the peasants and that's fine <laughs> so uh, and, then, <laughs> and then I get an email and it's like hello this is Carlton I'm looking for the girl that was with you at the play and I was like um I was by myself at the play um <laughs> but I'm here you can you can find me and Carlton messaged back. He was like, no, there was a girl with you. And she gave me the wrong information. And I was trying to find her. And I'm like, I definitely came by myself. I, I, 
I remember coming and I definitely was alone. Oh, but I was available <laughs> if you need an address. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I was just like, uh, okay. Like, and the, e the email response was just so lackluster. Like, I guess I'll work with you. <laughs> if I can't find the other girl, you'll do it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Jesus. I was persistent is what happened. I was like, no, it's me that you want. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> That's what happened. It was so funny. <laughs> we laugh about it all the time now. Oh gosh. Um, oh. <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> um, First of all, I want to publicly, I want to publicly apologize for my rudeness. That was rude as hell. That was rude. That was so rude. I'm sorry. It's all good. Clearly, I was not offended. Oh my gosh, that was so rude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every time you tell the story back, I'm like, Carlton, that was so mean. That was horrible. Um. So yeah, um, I was yeah, guys. I really was trying to because it was a part that I wanted, but it was for like a younger part, and I was like trying to find her. I was like, I think she would fit for that part. I don't know what it was for. I can't remember. Anyway, um, things happen for a reason. Um, you ended up playing on College Days first. You played the younger version of Latoya. Yes, on College Days, uh, season three actually. You play young Latoya. Um, yeah. and I do want to publicly apologize for that too, um, <laughs> because you know that was an experience. Um, you know your counterpart, you know, yeah, that was an experience. Um, yep. <laughs> and I, I hold it for before people start trying to assume stuff. Nothing crazy happened. It was just sometimes when you work with someone who either doesn't have a passion for acting or who doesn't, who does, you know, who doesn't know how to act or doesn't have any experience acting, it can kind of be, it can be challenging. And it was just challenging. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Chantel was gracious enough to still work with me regardless of the fact. And uh, she came back in season four in a permanent role um, to Mira. And um, yeah, so talk about your college days experience. So um, I remember coming and filming scenes, right? But you only know those scenes. Mm -hmm. So I remember at the time I was a senior in college. So I'm filming these scenes and I'm just in my head, a senior doing this stuff. And so the first episode that I was on came out and uh, uh, Veronica, I can't remember who she's talking to in the scene, but she goes, yeah, I got to uh, show this freshman around. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> because she showed me around. I'm a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, I watched the whole episode and I mean, at the end of it, I was like, okay, I get the story. It's fine. But I remember watching that scene and being like, I'm a I'm a freshman. Oh no, that's not going to work. We're going to have to change that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're going to change it after it's already been filmed. But I, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. It was my first time doing any type of web um, series or anything like that. And I feel like the people that I worked with were um, the right people to mm -hmm. make it a fun experience. Yeah. Um, let me see. College, college Days was my uh, hat period of, of my life where all yes. of it was just where. Yes. Uh, so 
it, it became a thing for me to make sure that I had a hat in every color to, to match everything. And I remember um, we were filming season five and there was some, we, we were, it, it was the, it was the storyline where the professor came back yeah. and was like stalking us. Yeah. And uh, I had to shoot the scene downtown outside of the the news building when yeah. he confronts me. Yeah. And I forgot my hat. And I was so devastated because I had a hat on the entire time. Yeah. And for that scene, I didn't have the hat. I might have to I go back. Devastated. I might have to go back and watch that particular scene just to I mean I know you're telling the truth but I have to go back because I mean I honestly <laughs> I mean now I don't remember it but I'm sure then I probably was like oh man sorry to hear that Chantel you still got a film yeah. though <laughs> and I was just like oh I can't believe this like it when, when I do these characters and I figure out what their trait is going to be Mm -hmm. I work so hard to make sure that it stays consistent. Mm -hmm. And so like that killed me that I didn't have a hat on. And I was just like, I can't believe this. And I want and it was like ahead. I've thrown off everything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, it's like Chantel's not that big of a deal. But for me, I was just like, the whole show's ruined now. I get no, I get it. I mean, it's a part of your character development. So I mean, it's essentially that's you becoming the character, and that's who your character was. She always wore hats. So yes, yeah. I I mean, I get it. I definitely get it. Also, I want to keep people to keep in mind too, because she talked to you talked about um, you know, recording your first scene, filming your first scene, and then watching it. Keep in mind, people. We actually filmed as we went. College days, we did, we, like, how we do one of the other shows and stuff, we could film everything at first and then show it. College days, actually, we were filming, so we would film, like, weeks before, and then the episode would come out. So we were, like, filming literally as we went. So it was actually a natural progression of how everybody looked, talked, felt, everything was moving like like naturally like so we will film i think started in august and then we will stop filming like in april or may or whatever so we was yeah yeah it was it was a lot <laughs> it was, it was whole thing. yeah you know um i remember doing the last season um i had to go out of town for a funeral mm-hmm and I was rushing back because I was like, I have to be at filming. Um, because it was the it was the whole scene where DJ's character was going off to the military. Yeah. And I was, and uh I was trying to get there. I think Mallory had to leave. And um so I I just couldn't get there in time. And so y'all it ended up being filmed separate where we were supposed to be in the scene together. But instead, it's like, hey, um, uh, what was his name on there? Quint Quentin. Yeah. What's his name? yeah? His name's Quentin. Yeah. She's like, um, Quentin's outside, and then I like lift up off the bed and I walk out, but like behind her or whatever. But we had to film it separately, and I I felt so bad because I didn't get back in time. But I mean, we were coming from Philly, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you had a, it was a funeral. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I, mean, I, feel, I was just like, I could not believe it. And there have been so many times um, filming between college days and the Lions Den where I had to be out of town for something and I was rushing back to try to make a fulfillment. And I just, I don't know, like trying to be there for the team just has always been so important to me. And so I get I get very uh devastated when I throw off how something has to be filmed or whatever. Cause I, I don't know. I just want your vision to come to 
fruition. And so uh, it it always makes me mad when it's me that messes up something. So, oh man, well, I want you to take that cape off, take that pressure off yourself. You, I'm not, you don't mess up anything. It's all good. Life happens. I appreciate though. I do appreciate your. That's the thing that I definitely um, I do not take for granted about you is that you are one that will just 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 be you're about the team you're about the unit it's not it's not about you it's about okay how can we what can I do to make this work make the collective work and I definitely appreciate that um, wholeheartedly so you mentioned the Lions then of course which is the next series. Um, which was not originally the Lions Den. Originally, it was called Twenty Something, um, and it was it was a whole different premise. Um, it was about a group of friends. Um, some of the storylines from the Lions Den were, well, some of the storylines from Twenty Something did transfer into tw- into the Lions Den, but the whole overall arc of the series changed, and then we changed into the Lions Den, and you play Keisha. Um, which is the older sister. Um, and I want you to talk about the Lions then. And we can kind of just go through that because y'all, of course, y'all know we did 10 seasons of that show, 100 episodes. Chantel was in every single episode. Her and Rachel, shout out to Rachel who played Sheree. They were in all one all 100 episodes of the Lions then. Um, so I want you to talk about, of course, your experience uh, playing that role for so long that was like a long like one of your longest characters yes i have to say um just looking back i feel like keisha is uh my favorite role that i've played to date just because of uh the opportunity to watch her grow um at the beginning of the series she was just so God is this, God is that, God's going to get you through it. And by the end of the series, she <laughs> she, came back. she came back to that, but uh, she had her ups and downs. And yeah. at a certain point, she was just like, forget all that. Give me this bottle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was able to... Uh, portray some things that I had seen from afar, but not experienced. And I was able to play some things that I had experienced, but um, uh, the Lion's Den itself was a great project to work on. And uh, I remember the beginning process of um, when it was supposed to be uh 20 something and i remember us filming the hospital scene where amanda uh dies and my mom was there mm. and afterwards you know we're leaving and she was just so impressed with everybody because we're sitting there laughing and talking and then you say action and we jump in to a character and she was like I felt the emotion like y'all were so real like there was such a connection and most of us had just met mm-hmm. but she was like y'all like the group that we had she was like that is the perfect mix of people like y'all really blended but I think that her being able to see that scene is what let her see that you know, I was taking it seriously and that this is something I really could uh, make a career out of. Mm -hmm. Um, It took my dad a little longer. It took my dad a little longer. It it, it takes most dads. Most most dads, it does. (laughs) Yeah, he was uh, was just like, this this is real cute, Chantel, but what are you going to do to make money? And I'm just like, dad... (laughs) But um, he sees it now. Mm-hmm. He sees it now, so I I really appreciate that. But um, the the experience of doing the lines then I think helped me grow a lot as a person. Um, I I went through some stuff doing the lines then. Mm-hmm. Went through some stuff. Um. And 
when I look back on it, I think that it's amazing how some of the stuff lined up with the character. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll just give one example. Um, Around the time that Keisha was an alcoholic, I was doing a lot of drinking because I was in a relationship that I didn't really uh, need to be in. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I was very unhappy and I was like just drinking and trying to drown my my sorrows in the bottle or whatever and um so there was a there was a personal connection with the character and I think that that's one of the reasons why I feel so close to Keisha Lyons what um what was your favorite storyline that she's had over the 10 seasons? Um, ah, what was my favorite storyline? I always loved when she got to fight with Sheree and Bobby. Mm. I love those, those times just because, um, me and Risha and me and, and Shay, we have such a good friendship that it's easy for us to turn that on and do the whole back and forth. Um, if I have to think of one storyline, I I love Keisha and Xavier's storyline. Yes, I was hoping you would that, say that. that whole- yes, yes. <laughs> That that whole cycle, I think, was really, really good. I want to get into it because um, I always used to call y'all Black Love. That was my nickname for uh, <laughs> Keisha and Xavier. I love, I just loved you and KB's. Y'all chemistry was just so amazing. And it made me sad um, to have to kill that character off because, um, honestly, the only reason I killed them off because KB moved. Like KB yeah. moved, and it was like he and I, and it, of course, uh, he wasn't going to be coming to Augusta, you know, often. So it, I didn't want to make it to a situation where you know we had to. Hope, well, maybe, maybe Xavier, maybe he'll be here to you know film or whatever. We didn't want that, so we we are. I had already talked to KB about the storyline where we were going with Xavier, um, as far as his beginning and his end. Because originally, I had already in my mind had said we were just probably just going to do just do five seasons. And then that was it. It was the fans that brought the show back. I'm telling and it's, and then, yeah, and I tell, you. We thank y'all for that. And when I tell you Chantel has some fans, Chantel has some fans. And I'm telling you, they loved the Lions then. I remember we were doing Karma. We were doing Lover's Lane. They were like, oh, that's cute. Where's the Lions then? And I was like, <laughs> hey, oh, okay. <laughs> So um it was it's because of the viewers that the Lions then came back and we decided to continue on because we we had a we had a series finale in, in five. Keisha and Shaquan drove off into the sunset. It was gonna go do their thing. And then we came back. It was like, here we are. We're back. We got some more shenanigans. We got some more shenanigans and some more siblings to add to the equation. <laughs> 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 I love it. Um, there's always a debate between you, Risha, and Shataria about which character is the loosest on the show. Because I'm gonna tell you why there's always a debate. Because every time we talk about Bobby, Shay loves to bring up Keisha and Sheree. So that is true. <laughs> Who do you th- she loves to do that? She loves doing that. Who do you think? And I, I don't want to use the word loosest. I feel like you know people have experiences and they do their thing. But who do you think had the most experience when it comes to their relation, you no, know, their relationships and their partners or whoever they dealt with? I think. And I hate to say it. <laughs> so 
I think that Bobby was the me well, it's a tie between the messiest with she and Risha with with Bobby and Sheree mm -hmm. because they were all within the family. Okay. But I think Keisha had the most guys. Got you. I agree with that statement. I think we need to, so whenever we're with Shay and we have this argument, we'll say she had the messiest situation. Yeah. Because she would not, she she continuously to this day, it's like Bobby's the most innocent. I'm like, no, she's not. She's not. She is not. She pitted those brothers against the, each other. A absolutely. And to this day, I don't think Sean and Ryan have a relationship at all. I I, I would doubt it. <laughs> Wholeheartedly, I would doubt that. Um, what is Keisha doing right now? Um, Keisha is enjoying life. She is traveling, um, and she's making a life with AJ. Okay, so you think Keisha and AJ are still together? I think so. Okay, okay, I, so. I like that. The way we ended, I think that, and and I'm gonna be honest, I feel like that is an example of the one that got away, and then they meet up later in life, and it's their time. Yeah, and I think that's what I think that's what their story was. So you're telling me. That later on in the future, if I ever feel like picking up a camera, that Keisha and AJ are going to have a wedding. <laughs> I don't know if Keisha wants to get married again. Okay. Okay. But I definitely think that her and AJ are going to be together. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me, let, let me preface this now. That I said if, and I did not say I was. I don't want people to tell us exactly. so. I don't want people to tell us, oh, he about to pick up that camera. No. <laughs> the lion's den is coming back. <laughs> no. That, 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 I did not say that. That's not happening. No, not not <laughs> in, the, in the foreseeable future. <laughs> um, um, this is just a what if. But right, it's yeah. a what if. Like, yeah, like Marvel when they do the what ifs. It's a what if. Um, now, I want you to name the siblings in order. Okay. Well, first, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> uh, am, am I doing the original five or the whole? The whole the whole shebang, all all of them. Jesus. Okay. That's so hard, Norman. Yes. Keisha. J C. Malcolm, Sean, Raven, oh no, um, Ryan, Raven, Aisha, and JC and uh and uh Kevin's character were twins. You skipped somebody. You skipped <laughs> Lucas. I did skip Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was gonna mess it up. It's too many. So, it's, okay. so yeah, Nor Lucas Nor comes in. Norman Lucas. It, you're right. Okay. Nor yeah, Norman Lucas, Norman Keisha. Lucas. So Norman, so Norman Lucas, Keisha, J.C. Quentin. Yes. The twins. Uh, Malcolm Sean. Because they're the same age. Right. And Malcolm then, Sean. and then Ryan. Ryan. Raven, Raven, Aisha, and then the unborn child that was aborted. <laughs> we we try to forget that storyline for for we, yeah. for for reasons that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> let us let, leave that. Aside. Let's let's leave that. Let's let's <laughs> let's let's leave that. <laughs> did you did you think the show would go on as long as it did? I did not. Mm -hmm. Um I was happy that we did five seasons. Yeah. And, um it was it was like I knew people like college dates. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I felt like they liked it because they could relate to that college atmosphere and um the things that connected all of us in that in that setting. Right. Um and it felt like a natural progression for 20 something because it was supposed to be just a group of friends. Um uh, when it became, you know, this family I liked the storyline but I didn't know how people would respond to it. Mhm. Mm um and I don't know why I felt like that because looking back like so many shows are about families mm -hmm. and they last for a long time um because you're seeing that family dynamic so I don't know why I felt like that then but um when we hit uh 50 episodes I felt like we had accomplished something so when you were like that's that's the end of it I I felt okay with walking away from it so yeah. um I was very surprised by the the announcement that we were coming back but I was all the way down for it because I was like yes let's see where these people are yeah um it was great so to make it to 10 seasons that was I think a milestone not only just for VPN and for that show but I think that was a milestone for me because it was the first time I was able to take a character and really give them a full life mm -hmm. if that makes sense so absolutely I think definitely um I think we all feel that way um just me, I just, you know, me as a writer, as a producer, I feel like I've grown through that show. That show's helped me grow. Um, even as an as my character, who originally wasn't even supposed to be on the show. But because right. I saw y'all was having fun, I was like, I want to be in it, on it. <laughs> um, so just being a part of this ensemble group of people, I think we've all grown. We all grown together. And I think it's been, it's awesome to like go back and watch and, um, and just and just and see the growth, especially from episode from season one yes. to season ten. I feel like the growth is astronomical. Yes, I swear. Um, from from the lighting and the staging, um, the cameras mm -hmm. that you used from day one to the end, like you can really see everybody grow. Yeah. Um, and I just mentioned that because that's the stuff that is kind of behind the scenes, but that helps with the growth of the the full product. Absolutely. Um, Because we as actors, if if you're taking it seriously every time you do something you're you're supposed to grow um so it was going to be natural for us to get more comfortable in these characters and get more comfortable with each other but um the the way that the staging changed and the lighting changed and and the cameras all of that showcased the growth of the whole product mm -hmm. So, absolutely yeah. absolutely um so you also a part of another uh, uh you was a lead in another series x factor so also part of that yes uh, um so let's talk about that adventure i <laughs> love x factor <laughs> <laughs> that was my first opportunity to do a comedy and um like, I feel like Keisha had a couple of little funny one-liners in the Lion's Den and little situations where where you let me kind of ad-lib and stuff. But X Factor was a true comedy. And um, I, I got interested in comedy because I did Class Dismiss. Uh-huh. And... We're, gonna, I, we're definitely going to talk about that, too, but yeah. Okay. Um... But after I did that, I was like, I would love an opportunity to just like really do a comedy. So when you came up with this, I was just like, please, 
sign me up. I'm down. <laughs> and <laughs> um and five seasons in, that's one of my favorite characters. Uh, it's one of my favorite shows. Like I still go back and look at that show. Um, I think me and um, Lord, what's the character? Your sister? No. Um, your best friend. Oh, your Adam. His name is Adam on the show? Yeah. Okay. I think that um, their their dynamic was great. That uh, that unrequited love kind of thing. Yeah. It was great. It, it reminded me of uh, Hillary Banks and Jazz. Absolutely. The, the original. Not, yes. Yes. Not, not the, the new. No. Yes. I don't acknowledge the. I don't acknowledge the. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um oh, yes yeah. um x factor the original concept actually came because honestly i really wanted to work with reynard who plays adam yeah um i really wanted to work with reynard he had he'd been doing some skits and um i really wanted to do something with him and um, you know, of course, shout out to Shoshana, shout out to you and um everybody else that came apart, Mike Dove, um, Kenyatta, um yes. everybody that was a part of X Factor. My nephew Kyler, we got to see him be a <laughs> we, part of it. We um, saw him grow up on we actually show. saw him grow up on the show. And um, yeah, it was just a beautiful thing to be able to do something. A lot of people say that they enjoy that show also because they got to see me actually be funny i think a lot of people think i'm so serious all the time and people don't who really know me know that i'm a clown like i laugh all the time especially yes. if you, if, especially if you have the the privilege to come over to our family home <laughs> i'm always i'm always laughing i'm always telling you know like jokes and stuff like that so i love to laugh and i, I love that people got to see that side of me um just be silly and actually just kind of let loose. I just enjoy I enjoyed our entire dynamic. Do you have a favorite episode? Because I definitely have I have two. I have two heavy episodes actually. So do you have a favorite episode of X Factor? Um I don't know if I have a favorite episode. I know I have favorite scenes. Okay. Um I love the scene where I kick uh, Mike out the house and turn around and Reynard is right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, how did you get in? <laughs> 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 I love that scene. Um, I love uh, the scene where I think um, how excellent. Mm -hmm. Um. I love the party scene. Uh, and it's crazy because I was sick. You were. You absolutely was. And I was like, I'm going to work it in here. <laughs> and so like, I'm just like laid on the sofa and just like real down, but still like cracking my, cracking my jokes, being sarcastic or whatever. Um, and I think it ended up coming out really good. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. Uh, oh, what's that? What's that scene? Uh, I think you were asleep, and Kenyatta like you wake up and she's like over top of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. love that. <laughs> and she was like, "What? You're throwing her out of the house?" And she's like, "No." <laughs> I love that. I think that was in season five. Yeah, that was. That was the last season. Yeah. And and the and I also love that scene uh when uh I can't remember his name right now and I know it, but um it's because I'm trying to talk about him that I I can't recall his name. But he came in in season five and he was uh -huh. your cousin. Oh uh, well Lorenzo played him. Lorenzo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um and he's in the room singing 
and you come in and like put the pillow over his face. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. Like when we were filming that, I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and it came out so great in that episode. That's hilarious. Yes. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, my two favorite episodes are the gym episode. Because it's the, it's the it's the Nelson J. Davis slash Jim episode because you got your characters were obsessed with Nelson J. Davis. Yes. And then me and Raynard was trying to our characters were trying to get fit. I love the episode. The episode was hilarious to me. <laughs> um, I'm still amazed to this day that Joseph was able to pick me up. <laughs> I was like Joseph, I'm very heavy. He just <laughs> no problem. Just... No problem. He got it. <laughs> Heavy wear. Uh, right, right. Lightweight, light work. Um, and <laughs> then my second favorite episode is the uh Hamilton Hamilton episode when Laura goes out on the date and then he finds out she's pregnant and <laughs> all that stuff. Because I love my I call him my cousin. Uh I love Brandon Dawson. I love that he came in and he guest star on that part. We've been talking for the longest about doing like a limited four episode thing with his character that um, would be hilarious I, we've been talking about it we've been talking about it for years i'm not sure if it's gonna happen but it's always it always comes up because that scene comes up in my memories all the time and i'm always i always bring it up i was like when are we gonna do this limited thing <laughs> and he's like yeah we're gonna do it and it just doesn't doesn't happen so i just feel like that's just a conversation yeah <laughs> Some stuff is just gonna be talk, but right, right. The again, what if the what ifs? <laughs> um, so yeah, so we also you've done um some films, uh, you've been a part of some films. Uh, let's see. Uh, of course, what recently just came out, Kwanzaa of uh, Kwanzaa Family Vacation. Yes, that just came out. Um, you want in uh, a very merry new year. People love that scene, by the way. In a very <laughs> many year. Um, and by the way, people, that scene was ad lib. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she came in and just ad lib that part. But it was it's funny, you weren't originally supposed to play that part. Right. And this is the this is the thing I love about this is Chantel, Shay, Rachel, um, Sa. Uh whenever like something like and I and it's not like I don't cast them for stuff because I want I do cast them for things I want them to be in but there are times when I cast other people and those people do not follow through oh Kiara um those people those, I want to put her in there too those people they don't follow through I know those five women I can call them and they be like what you need and especially, I know, I can say, I know the certain things that they're gonna do and not do. But I know that if I need something and it's in the parameters, I know I can call one of those, one of you five. And I definitely, truly, from the bottom of my heart, definitely appreciate you for just all the years of everything you've done. And so that part is actually one of them because we had somebody originally that was supposed to play that part. She couldn't do it for whatever reason, and then Chantel stepped in and. And and tore it up, like just came in and just really and really did that part. Um, what is that? What other movies? I feel like there was more. Is there more? I did Reindeer Games. Yes, Reindeer Games and My Brother's Keeper. My Brother's Keeper. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the assistant. I just did the the flashback. That's right. Yep. That's yeah. Um, very brand new year, Sisterhood. You know what? You know why I be forgetting about Sisterhood because it was a series originally. That's yes. what I'm just like okay, yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's one. That's one also that I wasn't supposed to be yeah. in. That's correct. Yeah, that is correct. That is correct. I and, and I want to let's change that. I guess we'll change that vernacular. It was like you obviously God had it to where you were supposed to be in it, but you weren't originally casted for those parts. We'll just say that yeah. because things happen, and it's like okay, this person is actually set up to actually supposed to play this part and make it what is what it is so right. yeah is there are there any um film role well first of all oh redemption for easter oh how can we forget that i don't know because oh well we definitely gotta talk about that um 
because uh yeah that we definitely gotta talk about that so i want you to because again you've been with me for so long how did you feel when we started going into film because i remember there was a while ago i was like i'm never doing a film i was like people kept asking me are you gonna do films i'm like no i don't want to do that i'm good i'm gonna do series i'm good on I'm, I'm good with series and then 2020 hit and then here we are we're doing films yes. So from the outside looking in, how did how did you feel about that progression? Um, I felt like it was a natural progression. And I understood, you know, your feelings on not doing film. But personally, I feel like um the way that you film series is the way that you film a movie. So it just felt natural to go into that. Um, and I feel very proud. I feel so proud every time uh, a movie drops because I'm just like, my friend, man, like, <laughs> you're doing this. Like, I'm looking at your wall right now talking to you, and I'm just like, that's awesome. Uh -huh. I feel just so proud of you oh thank you i appreciate Absolutely. it I, I i i always say that you know i wouldn't be here today without you guys so i mean i i don't i don't uh take that uh you know i don't take that half-heartedly at all i feel like you guys you guys are on my foundation like i, I really honor and treasure you guys like not just working relationship but friendship as well definitely 100 percent um yeah, I uh, we was talking about redemption for Easter, and for me, uh, first of all, the the beginnings of it. First of all, it actually, he, we I remember it was called the right way. We were shooting a yeah. ten minute pilot. I was trying to enter this competition. Somebody told me about it. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna get on it. Um, and we literally, I I I think we were filming the lines then that weekend or something. Was we was doing something already yes. that weekend. And I was like, okay, guys, I got this thing. It's 10 minutes. It could get us on a major platform. Are you down to do it? All y'all was like, yes, let's do it. Let's get it. And I remember, uh, again, we always got to honor our friend, our brother, Nathan Rothwell. He uh, allowed us to come to his house and shoot that 10 minute. I mean, it didn't take 10 minutes to shoot, but it was a 10 minute, 10 minute. Uh, it ended up being 10 minutes to put together. It was 10 minutes short to submit. Um, but it was really caught the right way. Uh, oh, we also have to acknowledge. Um, we also have to acknowledge Carol Coleman, who yeah. uh, played the mo the mother. Um, and so yeah, it was an amazing experience. But uh, fortunately, it didn't go anywhere. Um, we didn't win. And but I was like, hey, I think we could take this story and expand it because I got called from Maverick. They said, hey, would you want to do an Easter movie? And I was like, sure. And so I took the right way since nothing happened with it and just expanded the world and expanded the characters, changed a few names and uh, and changed some some uh, some other things too to, to the characters um, to kind of update them. And here we are. Uh, I think, Diana, I think you and Shay are the only characters' names that didn't change. Right. Because um, you're Shalita and she was Diana. And I think you two are the only people that played the same part from the 10 minute to the actual film. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I want, so how was your experience doing that film? Um, I can say that Redemption for Easter has been my favorite filming experience for the movies. Mm -hmm. um, I was taking off work so I was all I was able to be on set um and just really bond with everybody. Um I had watched these people uh, you know before uh Marquise. I, I I had liked him uh prior to getting the chance to work with him and obviously I worked with Shay, um Miss Audrey. Um and so it was it was great to work with them um doing this and then oh yeah and uh dj mm -hmm. uh we, you know played on the lines then 
Um, and it was great to meet uh, the young man that played our younger brother. Um, oh, Patrick. Yes, that was my first time working with him. And he was so sweet. Mm -hmm. He was just so sweet. And I was just <laughs> like, look at this. And so, like, at the end of we, I think we only filmed for, like, a week. Yeah, it was a week. So, it was a but week. I felt like that was my little brother. Mm. I was I was just like, yeah, this this my boy right here. Um, so it was cool. Um, and uh also working with Damien, that was my first time getting to work with Damien. Um, but that really um was another character that I could connect with mm -hmm. uh, on a personal level. And so I really feel like I was able to take um, those emotions and put them into Shalita yeah. to bring her to life. And so um, I, I'm really glad that people connected with her. Yeah. So yeah, that that honestly, I I tell people like that was. Um, one of my favorite moments on set. It was a surreal moment. I hadn't. I so Chantel, um did the scene where she can where Shalita confesses to her mother about being raped, and I just remember feeling. I don't know something just took over me. I just I said cut and I just started crying. I it that was the most that had never happened to me before ever in life and. That was the most surreal moment ever. I had to take a minute. I'm like, y'all, I got it. And then I just went into the living room, bawled my eyes out. I think I know Shay came in there. She hugged me. And it was just, you just did such a dynamic job telling that story and really bringing that story and that character to life. Um, I really, like I said, just that whole experience. Um, shout out to Quincy and James. They came down from Atlanta to help me film it. Um, we 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 did that. I I we yeah. we did that. We we did that. Um, I think a lot of people really resonate with that film. Um, and just with those characters. And then me and you offline, we talked about um at Shay's New Year's party, um uh, Shay and Dominic's New Year's party. We talked about the characters about what we think they would be doing now and everything. Um, and I told you I felt like Shalita, um, she's living on the beach. Um, I think she is, like I said, she is in a relationship, but it's a definitely, he understands her past and he's very patient with her, very caring and nurturing. Um, but I feel like she's in a, she, you know, she talks to her siblings every now and again, but she had to disconnect from that place in order to heal and get better. Yes. I think she, and, and that beach background where you are now. I feel that's where Shalita is. This is where she's been. <laughs> I came to visit her. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yes. Um, yes, definitely. Um, also, too, we again I mentioned a very man new year, the scene that you did. Uh, how did you what? Because the whole the whole thing we was like together, together. Like, where did that come from? Like, what was <laughs> what was that? <laughs> um, I really don't know. I just felt like in this moment, this friend is trying to do everything she can to make uh what what's Shay's character's name? I don't even remember. I cannot remember. <laughs> That's so crazy. Like if if I would have if I would have known everything you were gonna ask me, I would have went and made sure I knew everybody's name. But uh, I think that was just a case of a friend trying to say everything she could to, to get her friend to understand she was being stupid. Uh huh. Um, and it just came out. <laughs> it just came out like that. Like even when i um looking at the picture and i'm like because if i don't even talk to girls but i'll be like you know like <laughs> it it really was just that case of i'm not trying to tell you what you what to do but i'm telling you you need to get out of here right up there check on your man um so it was it was just in my head like what would i want some i would want somebody to really drill it for me mm -hmm. 
to make me get up and move. Right. And so I was just trying to think of everything I could say to make her get up and move. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, a Kwanzaa, a family, a Kwanzaa family vacation, um, which as we speak is actually now officially out. It's out right. on 2B. It's on 2B, guys. You guys can watch it. Um, I know it's not Kwanzaa time, but just go ahead and get ready for this year. Go ahead and watch it. <laughs> Yes, just prepare yourself. Get your get your mom right. Um, <laughs> how, how how did you feel being a part of that project? Because again, another family project. Yes. Um. So uh, of course you're um an older sibling. So how did you feel about being a part of this one? Because this is a, this is different too from the other characters that you portrayed. Right. Um. I really enjoyed it. It definitely was, it, it put me in the mindset of Keisha because I was playing a married woman. My husband's gone overseas again. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that this character was a little bit more lighthearted than Keisha was. Mm -hmm. She was able to laugh a lot more. Um, but when the serious stuff happened, like she really felt it deeply. Mm -hmm. Um, to the point where she she couldn't function. She's in the bed, you know. Um, and I think that trying to find those differences in the character, um, so that it's not a replication. Mm -hmm. Um, is really what was my challenge for this movie. Gotcha. Um, because also, you know, you got the sibling dynamic again. And just like me and Victoria, me and Nicole have that relationship where we're going to laugh, we're going to get together, and we're going to just go back and forth. Right. You know? Um, and so I think that we had a similar dynamic with Keisha and Raven, but I think ours was once again a little bit more lighthearted um than than that because um I think the age different the age difference that we were playing mm -hmm. uh, made a difference and um the time frame that it was set in made a difference. So um because for me, as as a character, I don't think uh, my character lives there. I think she was there for just yeah, absolutely for, for the celebration. So it's almost like a going back home thing. And when you go back home, you jump right back into that that bond. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I think that was the difference. But it was so fun to do. It was just so fun to film it. Yeah. Um, once again, meeting everybody and working with everybody. Um, coming back and having Miss Audrey with my mom again. Right. That's great. <laughs> but it, that was my first time working with Carlos. Yeah. And so that was a lot of fun. And he he's so sweet and he's so funny. And um, it that I think that was great. And and one thing I can say. Um, just in meeting him and getting to chit chat with him on set and stuff, like he really embraced that father role, and you know, talking Offset was was the same dynamic. Like he was he was like that that dad telling you, mm. all right, now you getting ready to leave? Okay, I need you to make sure you got your lights on, get home safe. All that, like, th thanks, dad. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was great. Now you don't normally see a lot of movies about Kwanzaa. Um, you see, you know, you got Christmas movies, you got Hanukkah movies, but you don't really see movies about Kwanzaa. How important was it for you to be a part of this project and to tell this actual story? Um, I think it was very important. Um, I'm I'm glad to be a part of the project because um, growing up. Kwanzaa wasn't really a thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I learned about it because my mom was adamant about making sure that we had a well-rounded uh, educational experience. If mm -hmm. we were going to learn about Christmas, we were going to learn about Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. If we were going to 
if we were going to learn about uh, Europe, European history, we were going to learn about African history. Like my mom made sure we knew where we came from. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's something that's missing um, today and not enough people um, are willing to go into all aspects of history mm. um, is so glossed over now. Um, so I just, just taking this moment to do a movie about Kwanzaa, I think was important for me just because of how I was raised and, and who I've grown into. Yeah. I really hope, that um I mean originally the plan out were from the plan with the distributor was to release it last year. Um, you know, things happened. Um, we did it on Vimeo a little bit, but now that it's actually out out on a bigger platform, I'm really hoping that especially this go around the holidays, that it really gets more eyes. Because I yeah. think it's important, especially um as a people, as 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 African Americans, as a culture, I think it's important that we that we uh, understand what it is and actually understand the importance of incorporating. Nobody's saying get rid of Christmas, but it's also an addition to what we already celebrate. And it, and honestly, the way Kwanzaa is set up, it actually allows you to really embrace the principles that you have grown up with, as far as the principles within our culture embracing family and really and really 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 understanding the importance of family i think that was uh i think that's what one of the main um things with kwanzaa and i also think that's one of the main things that i want to make sure people got out of the movie that people really you know embrace your family flaws and all we all have stuff we can grow and we things that we can improve upon but at the end of the day your family is your family um, and you only get one. So it's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta come together to, to grow as, as a family. And I really hope that people get that message from the movie. Um, you mentioned something about, um, playing like different characters, but also working with the same people. Do you find it hard to work with the same people all the time? Cause I know a lot of people, you know, um, a lot of people have difficulties not not forming those characters you know sometimes we have people say that you're playing the same character you're playing the same part you're playing the same role do you find that hard when especially when you're working with the same people like trying to differentiate the characters that you play um i don't have an issue doing it because i know the work that i'm going to put into the character that i'm playing Mm -hmm. so if I'm playing against somebody that's playing the same character, I don't, I, I can't speak to what development other people do, mm-hmm. but I know that they're not going to be playing against the same character. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm going to, you know, study what, what is, what is this character's story? Um, okay. How do I want to portray this? What is this person's, uh, quirks you know um and that that comes with training and 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 growth Mm -hmm. um i don't i don't think i've had that issue Mm -hmm. i think i lucky for me the people that i've played against you know take take it seriously Mm -hmm. so I feel like I can say that they're taking the time to make sure they're not playing the same character. Right. And I think it it ends up working out and it looks good when you see the final the final product. Right. Cause because I mean, for example, um, you and Shay work together a lot. And I I see the I, I see the difference between Keisha and Bobby versus your characters on Kwanzaa, the Kwanzaa movie. There's a right. totally different dynamic not just within the story but just with the how y'all portray each character so yeah i think that's a very that's a very good example yeah i think so and even um our friend our friendship in 
a very merry new year um versus our our sisterhood and redemption for easter mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying there's there's a difference because we're not the same people mm -hmm. and i think that our friendship outside of acting helps us to be able to create these bonds mm -hmm. because we know each other personally and we understand that there's different aspects of our personality so we're we're pulling at that when we're playing these characters mm -hmm. so i think that's that's what makes the difference yes absolutely um before I let you go, we definitely I want to talk about classes miss. It's not a victory productions production, but because of classes miss, I was able to <laughs> get somebody to be a part of a victory productions production. Um, you had the opportunity to go and and be a part of the last uh it was the last season of Classes Miss when right. it was a web series. Yeah. Um, starring and produced by Nakia Baris, who played Tanya on Power Rangers Zio and Turbo. Um so talk about that experience. Like, how was that? Because you actually flew out to LA. Yes. And did that thing. So how did you, how was that experience for you? It was wonderful. It was very uh, eye-opening. Um, and I'll I'll say Film Classes Miss really let me know that I'm doing, I'm, I'm on the path that I'm supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, I've had people say to me when they've watched us do something, um, I mean, y'all just look like y'all were in a school or y'all just look like y'all was at somebody's house. And I'm like, is is that where the scene is set? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like we killed it then, if that's what you're getting, because that's where it's set. <laughs> Um, and so I get there and, you know, we're supposed to be filming in a school uh -huh. and I get there in the set, like I'm looking around the set and I'm like, wow, I could be a film with Vic Reproductions right now. Like it was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying it wasn't this big green, uh, soundstage or anything like that. Um, and so I immediately felt comfortable and um, the people there, all of them have been on numerous television shows. Um, Kente was on the Parkers and um, Sonya was on 911. Mm -hmm. You know, like everybody has done the, multiple things that I, you know, have watched growing up. And so I'm thinking I'm going to get on set and it's going to be like, okay, y'all get over here. The stars are over here. It was not like that. Mm -hmm. at all. Like they were welcoming. They're asking us questions. We're asking them questions. You know, um, it was, it was a very easy atmosphere to work in. Um, it was my first time uh, being on set and having a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Uh, but I want to say, um, if you watch the, <laughs> if you watch the episodes that I'm in, or if you watch the movie on Peacock, cause the, the series got turned into a movie. If you watch it, you'll notice my makeup change mm. <laughs> in the movie because the makeup that I had on the first day was a much more natural, uh, palette. Uh-huh. But there's a scene where um, my character has basically just like kissed Kente all over the place or whatever. But I wasn't there for that. So they got somebody else to put the kisses on him. And uh. he was Caucasian. So they used like a red lipstick mm -hmm. and not the same color lipstick that I was wearing. Ah, got you. So they changed my makeup for that. So like you can, if you pay attention, you can see what was shot this day and what was shot the next day because the makeup is different. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to go rewatch it. I don't yeah, have to go I mean, it. I'm telling you, go, go look at it. <laughs> like, oh, I do see that. Um, And I just, I just think that's 
hilarious because um it was a different level of filming but it's the same type of issues that can come up with continuity mm -hmm. and um you know being consistent on set and so like I said it was a very um eye-opening experience because it let me know that on on all levels it's the same work being done yeah absolutely yeah. it's just honestly the bit the difference it's just the money exactly it's just the money. That's 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 it. Is is that every every production has the potential to have the same successes and failures. It's it's just the difference of what how what what your budget is. Right. That's all. Um. So because of you, of course, I got to meet Nikia Baris. Uh, you took me to Ranger uh, Stop for my birthday that one year. Yeah. You introduced, which was great. Thank you for that. Obviously. You're welcome. Um. Uh, we got to meet. I got you introduced me to Nakia, such a sweetheart, such uh, a down to earth person, um, just just a sweet person. And I was able to connect with her outside of that. She appeared on VPN Mag, um, and then I was shooting for the Love of Christmas, yes. and um, I reached out to her. I said, "Hey, would you be interested in just doing a cameo?" Originally. I wanted her just to do like a FaceTime. I was gonna say, hey, you can record yourself on the phone, send me the video, we'll put it in. Da, da, da. She said, well, I can do you one better. I can actually like be in it if you want. I was like, uh, <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> if I want, I don't care if I don't want it. You're gonna, I'll take it. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, it was a dream come true. You gotta understand my love for Power Rangers growing up. Like people, if you follow me, you know that I love Power Rangers. Yes. And to actually have someone who you grew up on television watching to end up being a part of your project, like that's that's a whole different situation. That's a whole different situation. And we shot in Atlanta. She came because she was in Atlanta for a convention. So we decided to shoot while she was there. And she came on set, and it was, and like you described, it was just one of those things. She just came in so humble, so gracious, asking questions like, what can I do? She was like, what can I do to make my character better? You know, normally you, you think people coming in like, okay, I got this. I'm a professional. I'm just going to do what I do. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do and keep it moving. No, she really came in asking questions, asking me about character, like asking me what I wanted, um, her and Donald worked so get well together. They had so much great chemistry in that scene. Uh, even it was, even though it was brief, it was. You, but they, it was just they gelled so well yes. together. And she was just so nice to Kevin. Um, Kevin McElvin, he was there. He was helping me out. He, she was, you know, gave everybody hugs. She took pictures. Um, it was just an awesome experience. So, but all that is because of you, Chantel Wheeler. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I could do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, is there any? Do you have like one? I know we're gonna wrap things up. Do you have like one story, behind the scenes story that like nobody knows, like anything that ever happened, like something hilarious or something? crazy that ever happened that working because again you've been with us for so long over the almost well almost the 20 years i know it's a lot to think about it is a lot to think about <laughs> uh, something that happened behind the scenes uh I don't know. Because I can think of stuff, but I don't know if I should share it. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, listen, we don't want to get nobody in trouble. Yeah. We don't want to, we don't want to, uh, yeah, we want to keep this a, a happy medium. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I, I think I have to plead the fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's the yeah, we we don't yeah, we don't we don't we don't want that here. Yeah. 
I'm just going to, I'm just going to quietly walk, I'm going to quietly walk away from that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's go I to photo Stuff happens, guys. Stuff happens behind the scenes and yeah, sometimes you don't talk about it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's, that's very true. I'm going to talk about photos real quick. Out of the 10, what is your, I love the lines then, what is your favorite uh, cast photo? Favorite cast photo? Um, I definitely like, um, oh, I was getting ready to say I like the one um what season was that? It wasn't season it might have been season six, um, where we're all in that in that open space um uh -huh. at the end of the street. Is that season No, you talking about when I was on the floor? Yeah, I was getting ready to say I like that one, but that's seven. That's season seven. Oh man. Okay. Can can you pull up your your you got all those pictures? Let's see. I know uh, you have them somewhere. I do. Hold behind on. Behind you somewhere. Uh hold on real quick, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I made him get up. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Um I'm going to put my headphones on. I got to put my headphones back on so I can hear you. Okay. All right. So here it is. Here is the all 10. I don't know if you can see them. Yes. Okay. I definitely love uh, the one where we got on the winter coats. I think that's season three. That is three. Okay. Um. Let's see. I like season five. That's the one. one with the black and white. Right here, yeah. Yes. Um, hold it up a little bit so I can see the bottom. Um, okay, yeah, I think those two are my favorites. Okay. I think those two are my favorites. And then season, you said this bottom one was season seven? This, right, wait, right here. This is season seven. I, I, that's going to be my third, even though you're sitting on the ground. <laughs> I don't <laughs> oh, that's so funny! Cause I don't so, like I don't like that part, but everybody's like, "Why?" Didn't have his wheelchair, guy. Everybody's like, "Why is he on the ground?" Yeah, I didn't have my wheelchair that day. Um, I forgot it, and I was like, "Well, his character is paralyzed. He would not be standing up. He's gonna be sitting on the street." So, and. <laughs> oh, I can I can say I can I did think of just one behind the scenes thing that I could say, and I okay. don't think anybody's gonna get offended. Okay. Um, the the character change, the Natasha character change. Okay. Yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. <laughs> I was like, I don't know who this person is. Natasha didn't act like that. On the lines, then. Um, Taisha did a great job as an actress coming in to play another character. Mm -hmm. um, but just because I had already worked with Natasha and like knew who that character was, the the change was so drastic. Mm -hmm. I was just like, that's not the same person. That's not the same person. So when uh when Janika came back to film that season finale, like <laughs> it was it was great for me. And if you pay attention to the wedding scene, you can <laughs> you can see me saying, This is the Natasha I know. She kept saying it over and over again. I kept saying, I Chantel, please stop saying that. I was trying to get it in there. <laughs> Please stop saying that. Please. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lord. I know this Natasha. I know who this one is. It was so funny. It Jesus. was so funny. 
Jesus. Um, yeah. Is like there I said, it? Taisha did great. She did great coming in playing a character that was already there. But I was just like, that's not the same person. Yeah. And I mean, you did the thing where you were like, Natasha will be play. <laughs> And then we, because we had to, and the credit, the credit is we literally just rewatched the lines then, and it's like because Janika was actually in the first episode of season eight, so yeah. she was because season eight literally picked right back up where season seven ended, right. and so we had shot that scene during season seven. So when we came back for season eight, I didn't know Janika wasn't going to be able to do it because, uh, yeah, she wasn't able to do it. And so we ended up having to recast. Um, and then, you know, we kind of just go from there. So, you know, stuff like I said, recastings happen. I mean, we, changed, we changed JC, you know, we had three JCs. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, filming was like, okay, put your finger over the picture. If, if you, if you ever look, If you ever look at us in the lines, then looking at the photo albums, any picture that the original JC was in, you see us holding our finger over. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, you hold your you hold your thumb over it, but you're saying, "Oh my God, JC, you look so great." <laughs> I can't see you because your thumb's there. Your your thumb is covering it up. Go to watch that stuff, guys. That's that's behind the scenes <laughs> pivot for y'all. Little Easter eggs that y'all can go back and look for. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh no, I gotta do one more. So then when we re okay, because then we re we replaced Lucas too, guys. So Lucas yes. got replaced too. And so it was so funny because I had a we had a screen at the house and everybody kept cracking up. I was like, wow, Lucas, you definitely you got darker, you grew, <laughs> you, you grew, you got muscles. <laughs> like, what kind of surgery was this? I mean, how bad did they beat you in the in the prison? <laughs> they beat you. Your legs got longer. Like what? Right. Your, your skin complexion changed. <laughs> I mean, full reconstruction. Full surgery, indeed. Full. Full. They was cracking so many jokes. I was like, guys, <laughs> come on. Now you, you, you y'all know. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's one of those recasts. <laughs> like, I get it, but <laughs> that's not the same person. Not, not the same person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 yeah. There's definitely some funny moments that you can definitely laugh about and just, you know, it's just lighthearted fun. Yeah. For sure. Well, Chantel, okay. before. Go ahead. I'll, I'll say I'll say one that you might not have known about. Um, when I did the um guest spot on my best friend, uh huh, I had the pregnant belly, right? Yes. So I, I had to like put it on and layer it up so that it would stay in place. Uh -huh. So I had to basically wear it from my house to the filming location, and I had to stop at the store, right? So I get up. <laughs> I'm at the gas station. I get out and I'm like walking with this pregnant belly on, but I'm just walking regular or whatever. And I noticed that people are looking like, oh, she's pregnant. Like help her on the help her on the curb and stuff. So I started like putting my hand on my back, like, oh God, yes, help me. Take oh gosh. <laughs> it was, <laughs> That's it funny. Was so funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's hilarious. Yes. I was like, y'all don't even know this just happened. And then so I get to the location and um Jamarius is there and I'm sitting there with the pregnant belly, or whatever. And I'm, I mean, by this time, it, it's got me like this. My back is hurting a little bit. So I keep rubbing my back. Uh-huh. And uh Jamarius thought I was really pregnant. He was like, that wait, that's a belly? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that Jamarius thought you was pregnant for real. He thought I was really pregnant. I was just like, no, <laughs> this this is an act. Please don't, please don't bless me. Don't bless me with that. <laughs> don't speed it over my life. Don't, don't, don't do that. I, 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 
I'll push all that away. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I got one more story uh, with the lines in two. Do you remember when we shot at the river wall and I was in the wheelchair? Yes. And do you remember when uh, Kwamid and his friend had came, they, they came by and they spoke and I was like, I did something. I was directly from the wheelchair. And then when we finished, I actually stood up and the girl thought I was like, had a, it was a miracle. <laughs> it was like, oh my God, you can walk. This is like, oh my God. Oh my God, you can walk. I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I was acting. I, I can walk for real. I, I can actually walk. <laughs> I wasn't in a wheelchair. Uh, but you see your friend guy. He does miracles every day. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Hallelujah. But so she literally thought like a miracle happened. And was like she thought I was healed and was able to walk. That was. <laughs> My girl, do you see this camera? Please get out of here. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh man. Uh, any words of advice for anybody who wants to get into acting? Um, just do it. Mm. Just do it. Um. If it's something you really want to do, don't keep thinking about it. Just hop out there. Um, technology has made it so accessible to be able to um, film yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if you feel like you're not getting the opportunities that you want, um, do it yourself. Do it yourself. Um, like for me, I wanted I wanted to do music videos and um I I needed to make songs and I kept asking people to give me music or put music to my stuff mm -hmm. and people kept flaking and I was like you know what I'm getting ready to do this myself I bought a Mac I bought a microphone and I went online and found me some some uh tracks or whatever and I just wrote and I was able to get some of those songs featured in the movie. Absolutely. So, I mean, just sometimes you just have to do it yourself. Yep. And Absolutely. so just if if that's what you want to do, just do it. Awesome. Well, Chantel, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We definitely appreciate it. I know we have some spotty areas here and there, but we made it work. <laughs> we made it work. Um, yes. So thank you all again for joining me for VPN Chat. Stay tuned because you never know who I'm gonna bring up here. Talk about some things. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank y'all for joining us. We'll see y'all next time. Peace.